<laughs> All right, uh, I'll start out and say a few things and then you can, uh, you can fire away. Uh, great to be here today to celebrate uh, Hibachi Stainless's uh, 40th anniversary. Good Wisconsin company, good example, the kind of companies, in this case, employee owned. Uh, started 40 years ago. Like a lot of small businesses, started out with about 14,000 square feet. Now between here and Plover, over 200,000 square feet. Incredible group of employees, highly dedicated, I think reflective of not only the employees here, but of the hardworking work ethic we see all across the state of Wisconsin. And I particularly want to thank them for their commitment when it comes to things like this. Um, I think that's highly reflective of the good work ethic we see around the state, but particularly want to thank them here because they've got a, uh, a strong... Well, I was just saying, one of the great things they've done here is work uh, with the Manufacturing Alliance on upping the number of youth apprenticeships. We've had just a few years ago, we were up to a 10-year high. That's incredibly important because there's good paying jobs at manufacturing sites like this all across the state of Wisconsin. And whether it's in manufacturing, IT, healthcare, there's an abundant series of needs out there. Uh, so we're really excited to be here today as one of our first public stops. Obviously, I was in the State Assembly's Republican Caucus yesterday. Uh, talking a little bit and, and since Monday night I talked to my cabinet my senior staff Tuesday back in the Capitol meeting with my staff Wednesday and, and yesterday spent the day most of the day meeting with lawmakers as well as being in the in the assembly majority caucus and uh, next week you know this weekend we're going to be an, unfortunately on a serious side we're going to be at the uh, funeral services tomorrow uh, for Wisconsin Supreme Court Ju Justice Patrick Crooks and then uh, tomorrow at a Badgers game Monday at a Packers game and then uh, back out all across the state of Wisconsin next week talking about jobs, how to grow the economy, how to improve uh, our skill sets and our, our uh, education system and higher education in this state, all the things I love and care about. And uh, glad to be physically be able to be here more frequently going forward. And I'm looking forward to that. As I mentioned yesterday in particular, one of the key reforms we're interested in is coming right out of the chute here. Uh, is working with State Senator Roger Roth and State Representative Jim Steinecke on reforms that will help us um, when it comes to recruitment and retention, being able to recruit and retain the best and the brightest employees in government to make sure that uh, we can best serve the taxpayers of the state. Uh, we have a system that completely maintains the positive things when it comes to civil service in terms of it maintains a merit-based hiring process. It clearly defines just cause in terms of termination but it gets rid of some of the arcane rules that in the past have, have plagued the system and made it difficult to both recruit and ultimately retain the best and the brightest, which is what I think the taxpayers demand uh, out of their government. And I gave a couple examples yesterday, whether it's on the recruitment side, for example, for many of our employees in the Department of Corrections through the civil service process, it takes on average 3.4 months to hire someone. We know in the private sector, if you're waiting that long, likely the, the best candidates are gone by the time you make an offer because they're being recruited elsewhere. We need to be able to have the time to act more quickly. Uh, so there are changes that empower that to happen. Uh, we also know that the process needs to be for the 21st century, not the 20th. One of the examples I gave is part of the current process is a self-assessment test that allowed a short order cook to apply for a financial analyst position in the Department of Financial institutions that required both financial and accounting experience and this person tested high enough on that self-assessment test even though they had no coursework, no experience in financial management uh, to be the number one uh, person on the test list and they were required to interview that person. That just doesn't make sense. That's not what the position was suited for and so that just adds to the timing of the process when we need to recruit the best and the brightest. Uh, on the other side of the equation, I mentioned a number of examples whether it's in one of our state agencies, where an employee on average was spending more than four hours a day watching pornographic uh, uh, in, uh, things on their website. That's uh, something that uh, even though the agency wanted to terminate that person, uh, the Employment Commission reinstated the person. I think most taxpayers would look at that and say, that's crazy. Why in the world would you allow that to happen? But that's the way the process is today. We need to change that. When you do that, it's not only good for the taxpayers, it's good for the workers. It's good for the good, hardworking, positive workers who are doing 
the right thing every day in the right circumstances. They're penalized when other people uh, who aren't doing their job are allowed to stay in those positions. And so we're going to push those reforms to improve recruitment and retention of the best and the brightest in government which ultimately is a, a service to the taxpayers of the state. Governor, you told uh, some donors on a call this week that you intended to serve out your term and not take a cabinet position. But would you take a VP slot if, some, if you were asked? And can you talk more about your future plans? Uh, yeah, just overall, I'm not going to talk about campaigns. Uh, I, I, uh, I made a statement on Monday, and my statement pretty much speaks for itself in terms of a campaign I was involved in before. I'm not going to look backwards. I'm going to look forward. Uh, my focus right now is on being governor. I, I've got the, uh, the best job in the country. I was happy to go back to my day job and physically be here. I was never out of it. Uh, as the speaker, the majority leader will tell you, uh, there are days when they were probably wishing I didn't have phone contact with them because I was talking with them four or five times a day. Uh, but to physically be here, I think, adds strength to that. As I mentioned, the donors is what I mentioned to the Assembly Caucus yesterday, and that is I, I plan on being governor. Uh, I'm not positioning myself for anything else. Um, I'm certainly hopeful there'll be a Republican president. If there is, uh, I'll be happy about that because I think that'll be good for this state and good for this country. But I'm not aiming for some cabinet position. I'm really just focused on being governor. And I think any other suggestion to me is, is pretty presumptuous on my part or anybody else's. Uh, who knows who the nominee is or who that person would want or not want in terms of the running mate. I'm just focused on being governor and I'm going to be here. Uh, I've got three more years left and plenty of things to do. But you said last year you plan on being governor and then you ran for president. So are you giving yourself wiggle room here for a cabinet appointment if it comes up? No, I made it clear. I don't want to be in the cabinet. I don't know how more crystal clear I can be on that. Will you endorse anyone for the presidency? Uh, who knows? I might. But I think right now the focal point's got to be on, on being focused on on my, my job here in the state of Wisconsin. And that's what I'm doing here today and we'll be going forward. Are, are you open to running for president again? or And, and if so, do you think it was a good idea to do it while being a sitting governor? So, you know. Again, I'll leave that all to you, pundits, to speculate on whether it's a good idea or not. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll leave that up to, I've got three years being governor. Who knows what the future will hold after that, whether I, as I mentioned the other day, mentioned others who asked when they came in the Capitol to meet with me in the legislature. Um, I, I think you made a decision on whether or not I would seek another term after this term is completed as governor. I think that's a bit premature, but I am focused on being governor for the next year. You don't want to run for U.S. Senate in 2018, no. do you? No, I have no interest. All the governors I've talked to who've uh, who told me they went from being governor of the United States Senate uh, have told me how miserable they are, and I have no interest in being miserable. Would you run again for this office? Uh, it's pretty early. I get three years, a lot of work to be done, but that's, you know, we don't have term limits. Obviously, uh, if that's something uh, at the time uh, I'd consider, but again, that's a long ways off. Governor, Governor, how do you to convince the people in Wisconsin that you want to be the governor? How do you go around and make that point? Be there. I, I, I think all of us know relationships that uh, you can say all you want, but the best way to, to make that case is to be there, uh, to be not just at manufacturing sites like this, but to visit schools and hospitals and clinics and uh, small businesses and farmers, which we'll be doing all throughout next week and the following week and the months and years thereafter. Do you, you intend to all that can you tell us all that went into your decision to finally step down? I mean tell us about even the eleventh hour when you were maybe sore and decided about doing it. Our state model is forward. I'm gonna talk about what's forward, not backwards. Do you intend to appoint someone to replace Justice Patrick Crooks? Uh, I think in respect to the family of Justice Crooks I'm going to wait until uh, I and others are at their service tomorrow and they're able to bury Justice Crooks before we talk about who's going to replace him. How Governor quickly will you, uh, uh, your campaign pay back the state for the DPU expenditure? We have been all along the way and we'll follow the same process we've been using. Bills get submitted. Um, every penny will be paid just as it has been in the past. How much do you owe? I, I don't know. I just I know in the end we've already made payments along the way. And uh, again, that they'll be that'll be top of the list in terms of payments. Governor, three years ago, you said the civil service protections were a very important protection for state workers. Now you want to change that dramatically. Are you going back on what you said? Not at all. Why not? No, not at all. Uh, the civil service protections that are at the heart uh, of of the principle are fully intact. There is no change to merit-based hiring. Uh, the people of the state can have absolute full confidence, and when these reforms are passed. People will still be hired based on merit. Uh, these reforms clearly lay out the process for just cause firing uh, so that it's clearly known to employees and supervisors and others out there. What we're changing, are, are, what we're keeping, 
what we keep intact is the good. We keep intact the merit, we keep intact the just cause. What we get rid of is the silliness and the ridiculous stuff that's arcane. We're moving hiring and recruitment into the 21st century instead of where it's at in the 20th century. And so uh, all the things that ensure that people are hired based on merit fully remain intact under these reforms. All the things that say you can't just hire people, will, or excuse me, can't fire someone willy-nilly, that there's got to be just cause are further uh, defined. So if anything, we're enhancing the benefits uh, of the old civil service system. We're just getting rid of stuff that's outdated. Uh, if you talk to people recruiting today, you talk to not just this business, but to any of the other people here, they'll tell you uh, the way that we recruit and retain employees is not at all where every other, well, not every, most other employers are in terms of the 21st century. We're bringing government into the 21st century. We have time for two more. That this will inject politics into the hiring process and potentially will lead to payoff. Is that hiring process going to be done by civil servants, that merit hiring? Well, again, it's a whole, it's a merit-based process. <laughs> it's like a game show. <laughs> Does that answer good or bad? <laughs> um, no, it'll, it'll be, uh, again, it'll be all merit-based. It's very transparent. Um, it's a legitimate process going forward, and I would encourage um, a few of the skeptics out there that before they speak actually look at the bill look at the bill and what's in there there's all sorts of theories about what may or may not be in there this is a good example of why the politics being played here by people who don't even know what's in the bill speculating what may or may not be in there I think when people look at it they'll realize the reforms that are being proposed really put Wisconsin in the 21st century and they put us in a position to have the best and the brightest in their classroom remember some of the same critics were people who four years ago said our schools are going to be devastated after Act 10, and today we live in a state where our schools are better. ACT scores are second best in the country, graduation rates are up, third grade reading scores are up. Why? Because we empower the people who run our schools and our local governments as well as our state government to actually hire and fire based on merit, pay based on performance. That means we can put the best and the brightest in our schools and our local and state governments, and we're better off because of it, and we'll continue to be better off because of these reforms. Isn't Governor, the time for one said more. your campaign violated a marketing policy with an email. Did you give away? Uh, how did that happen? Again, that's a particular off the leaf. I, I wasn't involved in that process. Is, isn't a resume-based hiring system more subjective and not as objective as the system that we currently have? How is that? No, a, a, a fry happen? cook who scores number one on the exam, even though he has no experience. Was that person hired, though? No, but that's, a, but that's a prime example. He was required to be interviewed uh, because he was the number one person on that assessment score. It just shows you how ridiculous so that is. So one out of thousands of cases? And makes yeah, it, it well, the whole system? again, the vice versa. I think most people would tell you in the 21st century, resumes tell you more than just a random test out there. Resumes and, and ultimately having to hire people uh, based on their merit, based on their performance, not just on the resume itself, but their interview process and the skills that they bring to the table. Hey, Again, we, we have a system that's made for the 20th century. If we're gonna hire particularly young people, we've got you know one out of every 12 state employees is eligible for retirement today. In the next five years, that number creeps up to 23%. Within the next 10 years, that's 40%. If we don't match up to where young people are at today, where our future employees are at, uh, we're not gonna be able to recruit the best and the brightest because they're gonna get recruited by others out there. And, and I don't think the people of this state uh, want us not to be able to compete for the best of price. How about that minimum markup law? Would you sign that one? What's that? How about that minimum markup law? Would you sign that one? Uh, I just had a talk about it the other day. We'll certainly look at it. But for us, we've been involved for quite some time in this uh, recruitment and retention reform. Uh, and uh, going forward, we'll look at all the other issues out there. But that's not something we've been involved in. What about the fetal tissue bill? Again, I, I'm, I'm not. Uh, my statement about uh, the decision I made to get out of the campaign speaks for itself on Monday. I'm not going to go back in time and reassess anything else. Uh, for me, people want a leader who's looking forward, not backwards, and I'm looking forward. Governor, Governor, will you offer any olive branch to your political opponents, your ideological opponents here in Wisconsin, or more wreaking havoc, sir? Well, I think what you're going to see is what we've seen the last few years, which is a state that works. We went from over 8% unemployment to 4.5%. I'm willing to work with anybody, Democrat or Republican alike, who's willing to work with us on ways to move the state forward. And um, just as I have in the past, I'll continue to meet with Democrats and Republicans in the legislature and the leadership and otherwise. I've been doing that for the last four and a half years. I'll continue to do that. Going forward. All right, that's all we have time for. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.
You want a family picture? Yeah. Uh, here? Yeah. yeah.